Today I will explain to you the basics of tarot. Though today we associate tarot with a hidden occult knowledge, tarot cards were originally just another card game, one similar to the modern day bridge, in fact. The word terror appeared from the Italian word terrocchi. The origin of this world is uncertain, but it was used as a synonym for foolishness in the late 15th and early 16th centuries. The first recorded tarot cards showed up in Europe in the 15th century. beginning the sets were selling in Italy to wealthy families because the printing press had yet to arrive and hand painted cards were all that existed it cost a considerable amount of cash to buy and it was essentially a dozens of small paintings. The widespread use of tarot cards for divination only took of during the 1780s when the Frenchman Jean Baptiste Allier published the first guide to tarot card reading. He used a pseudonym Etelia and he released his own deck, Tarot of Mercy. He gave meaning to each of the cards, incorporating beliefs about astronomy, He claimed to have borrowed heavily from the Book of Thoth, an Egyptian text. Supposedly written by Thoth, the Egyptian god of wisdom. Etelia was also the first to assign a specific order and spread to the cards and he also published a revised edition of his guide in 1791 and he becomes the first person to be a professional tarot reader. In 1909, the tarot cards received a major update. At that time appeared a rider 
with Deck. William Ryder was a publisher and A.E. Wait was a tarot reader. And the Ryder Wade deck included a printed guide on how to read the deck and the meanings of each card. Here we have the original Ryder Wade tarot deck complete. instruction booklet. This deck is also called Rider Wade Smith deck because the cards have been designed by Pamela Coleman Smith. Here we have instructions booklet in which we have a short explanation of each card and spreads, basic spreads. Smith Tarot deck follows the usual 78 card structure of the tarot divided into 22 major arcana, what is another name for the cards, and 56 minor arcana. The word arcana means secret. But let us write a little bit about this. We have seventy eight cards. Of which twenty two of them are major. Arcana usually represent particularly striking elements or events that will have a powerful impact on your life. day-to-day -day event 
hands and provide greater clarity to generic reading. The minor arcana cards can be seen as being more detailed aspects of the major arcana cards. Also, minor arcana card has temporary effects while major arcana card has a longer term impact. There are four suits in the Rider Wade Smith minor arcana tarot deck. Each of these four suits follows the same 14 card pattern. So each of them consists of 14 cards. Now, when we are more familiar with the cards, we will talk about the spreads. To start divination with the tarot cards, we must firstly spread the cards. There are many card layouts, but some of them are commonly used. And I will explain to you a couple of them. spread, two card cover cross, three card spread, and the Celtic cross spread or layout.
the cause. Should be crafts in a wooden box. And in this box we have also one bag in which the cords are. And it is all because we don't want that energy from outside effect to the cards. When we are shuffling the cards, it is important to know that it is not the same if a card is in the normal position or in upside down position. So let us see which card is here we have. So here we have nine of pentacles and it is not the same if we are reading this card that is placed in an upward position or Upside down position. Upside down position has a different meaning. Because of that, we will not only shuffle the cards like we are shuffling usually other cards. We will also shuffle them like this because we want that cards position themselves in a disposition or either in this position. We are turning the cards in each direction. So that we allow the cards to be positioned in both directions. Okay.
of three. Finish the shuffling. We are ready to start with the layout. Let us start with the one chord spread. Sometimes we may want a quick reading that will give us guidance for the day. Then we will use the one card spread which is intended to give us information over a short time frame of 24 hours. It is a daily reading which helps untangle stressful events on a short term basis. After we have finished with the shuffling, we are placing the deck face down in front of us. Then we are cutting the deck and placing a stack of cards to the left and re-stack the deck by placing the right pile onto the left pile and at the end we are turning over the top card and this is the card for today so we can see this card is position in an upside down direction and it represents the star. Number 17 of the major Second layout is a two card cover cross spread and it tells what is happening in our life. Setup is the same as for one card spread. And the only difference is that we, after the first card, will draw the second card from the pile and will place it horizontal with face up over the first card. This card covers you. And card 2 is the challenges you face. This card crosses your path. This card is Ace of Swords. And this card is the seven of pentacles. One of the best tarot layouts for 
for beginners is a three card spread. Well, there are many variations of the three card spread. The most common one is the past, present, future layout. This is a good spread to use when you have a specific question or need to look into the situation. A three color spread can give us plenty information if we keep our questions uncomplicated. It is important to focus on a single aspect of a situation rather than asking a broad question with many aspects. The more specific the question is, the better the result will be. This three card spread is a very common one and involves reading our past, present and future regarding a particular situation in our life. The setup is the same as first two layouts. One card spread and two card cover costs. When we finish with the shuffling, we can draw three cards and place them down in front of us. The first card reveals the past events that are affecting our current situation. It may also reveal what may be blocking or helping us moving forward in the situation. The information revealed here can help us learn from our past. A positive past card shows that there is an energy we already possess that we can work with, while a negative past card is urging us to free ourselves of the bad influence represented in the card. As we can see, our first card is upside down card, the world. It is the first card of the major. second card in this layout it is the two of cups and this card represents the events that are currently taking place in our life it is the energy of the present moment. We should relate this card to the past card. How does the past relate to the present shown in this 
is called is there a negative aspect in the past that has led to this situation or is the past threatening to destroy the positive situation shown Card number three, the third card, in our case, it is Knight of Wands, represents the outcome of the situation. The information revealed may or may not be what we were looking is the most likely outcome given the circumstances as they are. If this is unfavorable, look at the preceding cards to detect what needs to be let go or changed in order to avoid what is shown here. If the past and present cards are both negative, but the future is positive, we are going through transformative period where we will learn to overcome the obstacles. If the past and the future cards are both positive, but the present card is negative, there is a temporary setback in our development and we need to work on the issues associated with the negative card. But our chances of success are great. as a mean to steer us into a new direction where the opportunity that is depicted in the future card can arise. If the first two cards are positive but the future card is negative our luck is about to change. But we can avoid a negative future outcome by seeing it as a warning for the path that we are on. An important thing to remember when performing a past, present, future reading is that the time frame for these events may vary. For example, the outcome of the future car may not happen until a year later or it may occur in just a few days. the last
last layout that we will talk about today is a basaltic cross spread. It is one of the most popular tarot spreads in use today because it answers a question in more depth or if we don't have an immediate question it gives us an overview of our life just now after we have shuffled the card we will choose them and lay them out but before we do this it is important to know that there are some variations of the Celtic cross. This can be confusing and make some people wonder whether or not they are using the right version of the layout. But it is because there is no such thing as the right version of the Celtic cross. All variation of the Celtic cross has ten cards that will be spread out like this. It is card about Pamela Common Smith, but we will not use this card. Card number one 
represents the person who consult us. In tarot, we call this person the querent, and his current state of being is represented by this card. This card tells us what is going on for querent right now. Indicates what he is thinking, feeling, or doing. This is card number two. This card is a challenge and it is placed directly over the first one because it represents the immediate challenges the querent is facing. This card can either tell us what is blocking him what could help him, depending on the card. Often this represents inner rather than outer forces. This challenge could be any obstacles the current needs to overcome. This card usually shows that there is either a possibility for a solution or there is an obstacle on the way. This is card number three and it is the foundation or subconscious influences. It indicates factors that are behind the query question. Usually that's influences from the distant past his deeper desires, beliefs and feelings that the current are not fully aware of, but yet it powerfully affects his situation. Card number four indicates events and influences that are more recent. It is card of the past, and this card is often connected to card 3, but not always. If card 3 indicated financial problems, for example, card 4 might show the queen has lost his job. On the other hand, if the reading is generally positive, card 4 might instead reflect happy events that have taken place recently. The card represents events, 
people and the issues from the past that have led to current current situation. These are things that are still affecting queerance today, even though they are in the past. This card represents negative experiences that queerance need to put behind him, or positive ones that can be an inspiration. This card is card number five and it represents querent conscious desires, goals and what is important to him right now. This is how querent is using his energy. This card reflects the querent's goals or the best possible outcome to the situation. It is placed above because it represents what the querent is reaching for. This card is card number six. This card shows what is likely to come in the near future. This may be in the coming days, weeks or months. It is placed to the right to show that the querent is looking toward what's coming. This is the direction that things are heading at the moment. If you do not like this card, ask yourself what you can do right now to shift your behavior and energy so that the outcome is different. The future is not set in stone. This is called number seven. It represents how Quirint is approaching his situation at the moment. This card can refer to Quirint's thoughts, beliefs or actions. It reveals his inner feelings that may be affecting the situation. This card is card number eight. This card represents outside influences like family, work environment, neighbors, other people, events, energies, surroundings. That will affect the outcome of the situation. These are the forces that are beyond Quirin's control. Card number nine. Signify. 
has the current hopes and fears. This is one of the hardest cards to interpret because people's hopes and fears are so closely intertwined. This card tells Celtic cross layout. It is card number ten. The final outcome card. This is the card that represents possible outcomes of the situation. Since the future is not set in stone, this is usually interpreted to represent what will happen if the querent continues on his current path. In this way, if the querent is dissatisfied with the outcome being predicted, they have the power to change the course of the situation. It is useful to compare this card to card 5 to this card, of course. This last layout, we will conclude our session for today. Thank you for your attention. In next sessions, we will speak about tarot card meanings, both major and minor Achilles. Good night and sleep well.